If you are struggling with drawing resonance structures in your organic chemistry class, then this video is for you. My name is Maya Lucci and in today's lesson I will go over what are resonance structures, how to use curved arrows to go from one resonance structure to another and what curved arrows represent. But most importantly, I will teach you the major patterns that you will encounter in resonance and how to recognize these patterns and how to use this to your advantage to easily come up with the next resonance structure. So let's get going. Resonance structures are different electronic representation of the same molecule. What it means is that resonance structures are different forms of the same molecule where the only thing that has moved is electrons. So here, for example, I have a molecule on the left and a molecule on the right. Notice that all of the atoms stayed in their place. Oxygen is here, oxygen is here. The only thing that moved is the electrons. So a molecule, in order to represent our molecule correctly and represent the location of electrons around this molecule, we have to draw multiple resonance forms for, molecule that are, for molecules that are capable of multiple resonance forms. And we have to understand that a molecule is a hybrid of all of its resonance forms at the same time. So in, it's, it does not equilibrate, let's say, this molecule. It's not the form on the left at one time and the form on the right at another time. It's at the same time all of its forms combined. And now that we know that resonance structures are different electronic representation of the same molecules, in order for us to draw this correctly, we need to understand curved arrows because we will be using curved arrows for to draw our resonance forms and actually we will be using them throughout organic chemistry. So this is a really important concept to understand and to practice. Actually, let me go here. What is a curved arrow? So a curved arrow represents a movement of two electrons. This curved arrow with double head represents a movement of two electrons and that and it has a tail and a head. The tail represents where electrons are coming from. So our curved arrow always needs to come from something that has electrons. What are two things that will have electrons when we draw resonance, resonance structures? It will be either a lone pair of electrons or a double bond. So whenever you're drawing resonance, you will draw a curved arrow either from a lone pair of electrons or from a double bond because it has to come from something that has electrons. I see a lot of students making a mistake drawing a, a curved arrow from something that does not have electrons such as a carbocation or a hydrogen. Don't do that. You will always draw it from something that has electrons. Now, the head of the arrow represents where these two electrons are moving to. So they have to move to something that can accept electrons such as a carbocation or it has to accept it has to come something that can accept electrons and then maybe lose another pair of electrons. We will see that soon in our in our major patterns for resonance. There are there is a rule that we really need to understand when it comes to drawing curved arrows and that will be very important in drawing resonance and this rule is that second row elements and these elements are on the periodic table in the second row these are carbon nitrogen oxygen these elements cannot have more than eight electrons octet they cannot have an exceeded octet so if you draw your curved arrow to a so let's say a carbon that already has eight electrons and you don't take any electrons away, that is a wrong arrow. Let's take a look at how that happens. For example, here, let's say that I'm trying to draw a resonance for this molecule and this is the arrow that I have drawn. Well, this arrow is wrong and the reason it's wrong is because the carbon on the right, on the right side it's not shown, but it's neutral. It has no charge because no charge has been shown. And that means that it has four bonds. It has eight electrons. It has two electrons with this bonds. And that means there are three 
more hydrogens that have not been shown that are there. So this carbon is connected to this carbon on top and it's also connected to three hydrogens, which means it already has eight electrons. Now, if I move this double bond over, what that means is now this carbon has five bonds, which means it has 10 electrons. Every bond has two electrons. So this arrow is wrong because it gave this carbon an extended octet. So we always have to watch out and make sure that our curved arrow does not give carbon, nitrogen, or oxygen, or other second row elements more than eight. And with that in mind, we will go ahead and um, look at resonance patterns soon. Before that, I do have to say that there are a couple more rules. First of all, all resonance structures will have the same net charge. We will see that soon. And also, whenever I draw my resonance forms, I must draw a double way arrow. And this arrow that has two heads represents uh, that I am dealing with resonance. Now that we have done that, we will look at the major resonance patterns. And that will really help you to recognize where to go when you start with your molecule. These are the three major resonance patterns. I have to preface by saying these are not the only patterns, but these are the most popular ones and the ones that you will see most often. The first one is when I have a double bond next to a positive charge. If I have a double bond next to a positive charge, I can move the electrons from this double bond. So this bond has two electrons. I can move these electrons over to create a double bond on the other side. So what this means is that this bond is moving over. Now it is on the right. This carbon that had a positive charge means it was missing electrons, but now I'm giving it more electrons. So now it has, it has the electrons and uh, it ha it, now that it got electrons, it is neutral. But the carbon on the left lost one of its bonds, which means it lost its electrons and therefore it will have a positive charge. You can also look at my video for formal charges and you can also just calculate formal charge, but you, it's important to understand or soon enough, once you do enough resonance and curved errors, you will see how to do the charges. This carbon did not have enough electrons. Now it has electrons, so it's neutral, and this carbon will be positively charged because it lost a bond. Whenever you see you are asked to draw a resonance structure and you see this pattern double next to a, car a positive charge, you can do this resonance. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples. Here I look at this example and what do I notice? Double bond next to a positive charge. Okay, that means I can do this resonance. I can, let's go ahead and look at the solution here. I can move the bond over. That means that this carbon will now be neutral, but this carbon is losing a bond. It lost its bond and that's why it has a positive charge. The bond moved over to the right side in this case, and I have a double bond on the right. Can I continue? So every time you do resonance, you ask yourself, can I continue? Can I draw another resonance structure? And you go until you cannot go anymore. Unfortunately, you cannot know ahead of time how many resonances your molecule may have. So you try to keep on going until you cannot anymore. So in this case, can I continue? Well, I see double bond exo positive charge. I can continue and now I can move this double bond over. What will happen is that the electrons from this double bond move over to make a double bond here. Now this carbon is missing a bond, so it becomes positively charged, and this carbon is neutral. Can I continue? So if you ask yourself if you can continue, you can see that, okay, the only thing I could do here is move back. I could use this double bond to go this way, but then I would arrive at my middle molecule. So that means I cannot do any more resonances and this is the solution to this problem. Now let's go ahead and look at the solution to this problem. Here again, I look at my molecule and what do I notice right away? Double bond next to a positive charge, double bond next to a positive charge. 
That means I can do this resonance pattern, double bond next to a positive charge. So I could use either double bond to move, to create a double bond between this carbon and either this or this carbon. Again, let's look at solution. I have used the left one to move over. And what that means is that I am moving this double bond. I'm using electrons from this double bond to create a double bond on here on top. And that means that this carbon is now losing a bond so it becomes positively charged and this carbon that was positively charged will now be neutral. Can I continue? Yes, I can. I have a, again a positive charge next to a double bond, especially when you have a ring with a bunch of double bonds. There might be multiple resonance forms there, so you have to watch out. I can move this double bond over. I will have a positive charge here. I continue. I can move this double bond over. I will have a positive charge here. Notice all of these are different so far. I have a positive charge on this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon. Can I continue? Yes, I can. I can move the double bond over again. And now I have arrived here. Can I continue with this molecule? Well, if I move my double bond here, I will get positive charge on top, which is what I already have. If I move my double bond back, I will go back to this molecule. So these are all of the resonance forms for this molecule. Again, just a reminder, double bond next to a positive charge. That's the first resonance pattern that we see a lot. What is the second resonance pattern that we see a lot? Double bond next to a lone pair of electrons. If we have a double bond next to a lone pair of electrons, it does not have to have a minus charge. In this case, it does, but it does not have to. So if we see a double bond next, one carbon away from lone pair, which is two dots, then that's my second resonance pattern. What happens here? We need to show two arrows. One arrow has to move from the lone pair to the bond to make a double bond here. And another pair will move from the double bond to the atom to make a lone pair. The reason we need the second arrow is because if I just use the first arrow, this carbon will have an extended octet. Again, hydrogen was not shown, but it's there. And I don't want this carbon to have more than eight electrons. So I need to draw these arrows. And what happens here? Let's see. These two electrons were used to create a double bond here. That's what I show here. The, this carbon was negatively charged, but it is sharing its electrons. It gave its electrons a way to share, and now it's neutral. These two electrons that, were, that used to be in the double bond were used to move over to create a lone pair on this carbon, and there is a negative charge there. So this is the next uh, most popular resonance pattern, I would say. And let's go ahead and see it in action. Here I see that I have a lone pair. I have a bunch of lone pairs next to what? Next to a double bond. That's a hint. That's my pattern. So what do I do? I draw, a, again, what did we do here? One arrow from the lone pair to make the double bond. One arrow from the double bond to make the lone pair. So I draw one curved arrow from the lone pair to make the double bond here, one arrow to make the lone pair. Let's see what it looks like. One arrow here, one arrow here. This is my new resonance form. This oxygen was neutral. It got a lone pair, an extra lone pair, so it will have a negative charge. This oxygen had a negative charge, but now it shared its lone pair, so it will be neutral. Next is the second example. What do I see here? Double bond next to a lone pair again. So I go from the lone pair, arrow from the lone pair to the bond, and from the double bond to the atom. The arrows go head to tail. You never put two arrows head to head together, always head to tail. So from the lone pair to make the double bond here, from the double bond to make the lone pair, these are my resonance forms. So these two patterns that I have showed you, I would say these are most often encountered in organic chemistry. I am going to go ahead and show you a third resonance pattern as well. And then we will talk about how to figure out which resonance is most important. So a third resonance pattern is a lone pair next to a positive charge. 
if we if we have a lone pair next to a positive charge we can simply this atom can share its electrons positive charge means this carbon doesn't have enough electrons so it wants the electrons so it wants more electrons so this oxygen can share its electrons and create a double bond in this pattern we will just draw one arrow from the lone pair to the neighboring bond with the positively charged atom to make this a double bond now this carbon is happy it received electrons so it's neutral and this oxygen used to be neutral but it shared its lone pair with the carbon so now it's positively charged i am now going to show you how to recognize which resonance structure is most important and how to recognize whether something is a resonance form or not but in the next video we will practice everything that we have learned right now we will practice it and we will see how these resonance patterns work so sometimes your professor may ask you which resonance structure is most important which is the biggest contributor these are the three rules that you can follow in order to be able to do this rule number one the more bonds your resonance structure have the better the resonance it is so here on the left there are more bonds than on the right and therefore this resonance form is better rule number two the less charge the better your resonance will be so again, on the left, this molecule has no charge. On the right, we have a positive and a negative charge. The molecule on the left wins. Finally, rule number three says, the more electronegative an atom is, the easier for it is to bear a negative charge and not a positive charge. Remember, electronegativity increases up and to the right on the periodic table. So if you look at these two molecules, we can see that in the, on the left, oxygen bears negative charge, but on the right, carbon has a negative charge. Which one would rather have a negative charge, oxygen or carbon? Because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, it is easier for it to carry a negative charge, and this resonance structure is better. If I am asked here, let's practice together. Which resonance is the major contributor? Go ahead and do it and come back for the answer. So let's see here. I see that on the left, my molecule has no charges and on the right, it has two charges. So which one is better? The molecule on the left. Finally, I am going to show you how to identify an incorrect resonance form. First, we have to check if there are any two elements uh, if there are any row two elements that have more than octet because remember that's a rule we cannot have more than an octet we can check for that we also have to check if any of the atoms move because remember in resonance structures the only thing that moves is electrons so if we see atoms moving that cannot be our resonance finally we have to check if the sum of all the formal charges is equal for all the resonance forms so here we have a practice that says which of the following is not the correct resonance structure. And if we look, we can actually identify right away that there is one structure where something happens, something is wrong. And that structure is, I'm giving you a second to think about it, structure C. And the reason structure C is different from the rest of them is because I can see that in my structure C, oxygen moved. Now, I know that for resonance structures, the only thing that I can move is electrons. I cannot move atoms. And here I can see that oxygen and carbon switch places. So this it must be an incorrect resonance structure. This is not a resonance structure. For all of these, we can see that the pattern is, again, double bond next to, next to a positive charge. So we can move our double bond here. That would create, that would create structure B. Or we could move our double bond here that would create structure D. C is the incorrect resonance structure. Let's go to the next video to take all of this information and practice a bunch of resonance structures so we get really good at drawing them out.